Yeah, yeah, we are back like we never left. It is the Science Guy podcast. I am your co-host, Saya Riley, joined by the always lovely Scott McMillan. Scott, how are you doing? I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. And you know what? Such a great weekend, such a great week in sports that we've had, you know, I can talk all day about it, but I don't need to because we have such an entertaining guest and I just want to get straight to her, right? She is a program record holder for the indoor track and field long jump. She is an All-American, a four-time all-conference for the long jump and was named Athlete of the Week two times, Lizzie White. To start off this podcast, like we always do, we start off with our icebreaker question. And if you were a professional athlete, what would be your signature celebration move? Oh, <laughs> celebration move? Oh, I'm re- oh, I have no idea. You have no idea? No. <laughs> I don't really like celebrate like that. I know it's kind of different, but if you were to celebrate, what would you what would it be? Do you even have one? Maybe like a dance move it's, or something? Honestly, it's probably just superstar. Like, oh. I just don't like superstar. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, Sai, what would yours be? Um, if I could, I'd probably like do the worm, but my body's <laughs> not able to move like that. So that's okay. I probably yeah, I probably just you know go like fist up in the air. You yeah, know, Black History Month, Black Power, yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Okay, okay. I don't know. What about what about you, Sky? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if I score a goal, I usually am so excited that I'm just like jumping in the air. Um, yeah, I don't really have a move. If I were to do one, it would probably be like the get the gat from 2019 oh, LSU. Oh. <laughs> that's dope. Just because no, I that like that. And yeah, that would be my celebration move. A little Dougie never hurt anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never could Depends go if there's music that. or not. Yeah, yeah. I saw that last week. You PR'd for ranks, which was nine in the U.S. and then top 50 in the U.S. world rankings. How does it feel to be able to achieve something like that? And does that make you want to work even harder? Um, It's definitely the goal in the long run is to take it as far as I can. We have USA's this week and coming in, I don't know if it's still nine anymore just because other people did compete this weekend. And it updates, I think, maybe yesterday today i don't know so hopefully it's still nine in the top 10 yes definitely i think in the top 12 but i'm just trying to place and let it keep motivating me to get further and further and further because i do want to go to the olympics this year yeah but i need to jump way further for that wow go to the olympics this year that's really cool that's really cool where are the olympics taking place paris i did not know that right and i want to go to paris (laughs) yeah i bet i would want to go too (laughs) The, apparently the I, medals I, have I, a little I, bit of the original iron from the Eiffel Tower in them. Oh, that's really That'd cool. Be f- really dope. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't know why, for whatever reason, I thought they were coming to Los Angeles. Um, but if they're going to Paris, that's oh, that's the year after or the four years after. Mm-hmm. I might have to get tickets. Yeah, I might have to get tickets. We want to ask you who is the person that keeps you going? Like who's that person in your support group that just keeps pushing you to keep being the best version of yourself? My boyfriend. <laughs> Giorgio. <laughs> Allegedly. No, How come? actually. How come? What does he do? He's really determined and dedicated in his sport. And so it kind of just carries over into how he looks at me and mine. Okay. And I like I like supporting him. So I'm like, oh, I know what he's doing for me is like the same. But I don't do it for myself. Okay. He does it for me. Okay. I mean, I, I do a bit for myself. I still get out there and, like, do the thing. Yeah. But I mean, when you see somebody that doesn't want to go to practice and goes and does it all and is on time and does these things, I'm like, shoot. <laughs> I need to get on that without these excuses. Yeah. Because I love me a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so, but def- definitely him. Yeah. I'm like, no, like, I'm just, I'm going to be done after this and blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just keeps you pushing to be the best version of yourself. Yeah, he's like, you don't waste it. Yeah. I'm like, but I don't want to do this. I want to do this. And he's like, don't waste the talent. I'm yeah. Like, okay, I won't. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the high school 
track and field scenery in Las Vegas like? Are there big schools that are known for track and field? Um, Because football, it's Bishop Gorman or Liberty. Well, I feel like Bishop just has all all the sports kind of taken over. So in my, like, school zone, because there's a bunch of schools in our district— we have, like, our track and field regionals is, like, sunset, sun, sunrise, sunset, because there's so many schools, it's divided into, like, four A's, like, multiple regionals. Okay. And then they go to, like, state and stuff, but there's so many schools, and each one kind of has their top few that everybody knows about. So there's, like, Rancho, one of my roommates at my last school, she went to Rancho, and she was really fast. Like, I knew who she was, and I didn't do track that much. I only did it, like, my junior and my senior year. But I knew her name. And then I was like, hold on. Wait, I live with you now? Okay, crazy. Yeah. But Gorman's definitely a good one. Um, I don't know. Track is Centennial. Okay. Centennial High School is definitely it. That's where the Bond sisters went. Okay. So, like, Taylee, she does hurdles now. She just finished out um, this last season. And now she runs unattached, like, pro and stuff. She went to that school. And they always, like, win state and stuff. They're really good. Now there's a 5A in Vegas, actually. Okay. But, like, with Bishop Gorman, I'm in the same school zone as, like, the Cunninghams. And so Vashti, she transferred from my high school to Bishop Gorman. Cool. Kind of when, like, high jump was taking off and stuff. It's a good school, too. That's dope. And I always like a competitive district um, because it just makes the talent that much better, makes them work harder, and it gives uh, better showcases, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. better competition allows for better events which garners more hype and attention to the sport. Um, Liz, you went to Southern Utah before New Mexico, correct? Yeah, I was there for four years. Yeah. Uh, We've talked to many different athletes who have transferred here from different schools and conferences, and the consistency seems to be that they just needed a change of scenery, and New Mexico has been a good place for them in providing that. What decisions went into you and why you entered the portal, you know, and you went there for four years? Um, yeah, what decisions went into that? Why did you choose New Mexico? How has it been so far for you? So, I mean, I didn't go to school for track or anything. I just went there because it's a two and a half drive from Vegas and I had braces. So I could drive to the orthodontist every month on a weekday and then go back to class. Like, <laughs> legit, it'd be a Wednesday night. I'd finish, once I started track, I'd finish weights, drive to Vegas, sleep over, wake up, first appointment, go to the de- orthodontist and then driving go to Calc, I had Calc my first semester. I go to Calc right, right away. So it was just for convenience kind of that I went to there. And then I walked onto the track team and like fall break Thanksgiving-ish because I was bored and I had time. And I was like, let me see about this because I didn't really investigate it in high school like that. So then I was like, okay, let me try this. And it was a really good time actually for the four years. I have a bunch of my like besties, still greatest supporters are from like my class, like my grade there. And they all kind of moved on, and it was after the fourth year that I transferred, and we had our COVID year. So they were all going on to adult life, and I was just like, well. And then there was just, I feel like, just some things that I didn't necessarily like about such, like, a small town. I mean, the elevation's the same. So training-wise, I was fine transferring. Mm -hmm. I I could handle it. The scenery, actually, like, the nature's very beautiful there. I'm, like, 30 minutes from Zion. Like, you can do whatever you want and see everything. There's four seasons. It's really beautiful. But I was, like, everybody's kind of leaving and outgrown this place. I think I have, too. And there was people I could stick around for, but I knew at the end of the day what I needed to do to kind of just get over some things was to have a whole different setting for my life. And so then I entered the portal. I debated it at the end of outdoor, kind of like before conference, and I told my jumps coach, and they were actually here this last weekend. It was really nice to see him. I, that's probably a hint as to why I PR'd is because he was there. I was like, I got you. Let me do this real quick. <laughs> but I told him, and I kind of debated the whole summer, and I backed out because I still had— like, there's like a school side to this. Like, we're students before athletes. And so I finished um, my incompletes that I had because I got a concussion in the fall. So I had classes I didn't finish, and I was like, I can't enter the portal unless, like, my schooling is in order. Like, you can't transfer with incompletes. That just doesn't happen. I didn't want to finish this class. (laughs) So I just decided I'm not going to transfer. And then the portal closes and all those things, and so I was just like, okay, I'm done. Turns out it closed two weeks after I thought, so I could have had it. And then I entered it late in August. 
Wow. And like August 5th or something, I entered it and I was like, okay, I've jumped far enough. I went to Natty's this last season. Something's going to have somewhere for me. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then kind of like, a, you know, the email started rolling in, the DM started rolling in. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I, this is not something I even thought was possible because I didn't go to college or anything like for track or sports or anything. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is kind of crazy. And then I got on the phone with Bob. He's at Louisville now, but he was the jumps coach here last year. And like 30 seconds into the call, like we were just, we were chatting it up. We were having a normal conversation. I was like, oh, okay. Hey, bestie. (laughs) And I kind of knew right then and there, like at the start of our call, like, uh, this is going to click. This is going to work because I put in the email, I sent an email to 10 schools that I'd be willing to go to. And in, in it, I was like, I'm not leaving because of my coach. This is his, like, email phone number. You can talk to him. Like, if I could take him with me, I would. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wherever I go, I need a really good coach. And I kind of had the same vibe with Bob. And so, yeah, I ended up here. And it was pretty pretty nice. I had a couple other options I was feeling out, but I knew I was going to come here. So I entered the portal Friday, chatted with him Monday. We talked again Tuesday. And then Thursday I had my, like, offer. Awesome. And I was like, okay, like, let me think about it. Because I told him, I was like, I'm trying to decide by Friday. And I had worked an overnight shift. I worked at McDonald's. I worked an overnight shift, and we talked early in the morning, and I just stayed up for the call. And then I, like, cried for forever because I was like, I was like, this. I know this is where I'm meant to go. And then he's like, you're going to find your husband when you go there? Because eh, they were all engaged or married. This is Utah we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you can, you, you, this is an opportunity. I was like, okay, you're right. Yeah. And then I just, two weeks. Less than two weeks later, I don't know, between Joe DeBonis, Amy Began, and Bob, I'm in a group chat with all of them, like, signing these papers, getting things figured out with my—then I finish my incompletes. And so it's, like, the middle of August. I'm finishing these classes trying to get admitted to UNM. It was, like, a whole crazy ordeal, but they busted their ass for me, and then I just drove here. Wow. And I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I told my roommate because I was like, hey, girl, you're going to have to pay all the rent by yourself next month. Sorry. Because yeah. we had just renewed our lease, too. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was a whole crazy thing. I just put on my Snapchat story when I left. I was like, bye, guys. Um, I'm actually transferring. And yeah. everybody was like, what? But the people that really mattered kind of in the long run were already, like, leaving anyways. Yeah. And so there's a couple hearts I had to break. Be like, bye, besties. But they already kind of knew. It was it was really actually kind of crazy. But I just I sent it. Yeah. And look at you now. That's awesome. Look at me now. Yeah. Whoa, track and field. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, my dad put me in track one spring. I was a, a baby. I was a little kid. And um, it was like we did another competition and all that stuff. We, I did three, took second place in all of them. That was kind of like my highlight of my youth because I wasn't in sports, you know, <laughs> prior to that. Right. So I was like, oh, snap. You know, I did a thing and I won second. I didn't get first, so that pissed me off. But I was like, you know, <laughs> I could take three seconds. <laughs> Yeah, but my favorite one that I did was long jump, um, just because I I love to jump. I still like to go to Sky Zone, Big Air, Cool <laughs> Springs, Robert Port Noyes Place in Albuquerque, um, whatever it is. You know, what feeling do you get when you're in the air for someone who is just a beast in the event? <laughs> um, I kind of black out. Not gonna lie, I got, like I don't remember wow. it. I'm on the runway and I kind of have to like think of what I'm doing to get it right because if the first step feels wrong, I'm like, oh, and you have to make up for it, make adjustments. Like while I only have 16 steps and everyone has to be like super calculated, it's very technical so that I hit the board right and whether it's my leg position, actually where my foot is landing is like on the board so I get every centimeter I can because they just measure it from right there. So if you're behind the board, like you're not getting that extra distance counted towards your mark. You don't want to scratch either. Because you want it to count. But um, it's just super thoughtful. I don't know. Everything, I'm just like this, 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 this. And then by the time I take off, I go up and you feel it. Like, I know whether or not I've scratched when I take off. Because sometimes you can literally feel the red part under your foot. So if I feel that, I know I've scratched. I, I don't throw the jump, but I kind of throw the jump. I'm just, I'm just like, oh, I scratched. I just finish it, whatever. But I don't finish it all the way I don't know but some if it's a good one and I'm really fighting for it I take off and I'm up I don't remember it Mm -hmm. until I'm in the sand and then I'm like okay cool 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 because the motion of my legs and everything it's just the momentum takes it and it just goes yeah I don't know it's literally I just like and then I'm like okay I'm here I'm back 
Dang. How did you practice, like, the 16 steps to be able to, like, jump so long? Like, how does that— I used to take 20. 20? Okay. But I'd be gassed by the time I hit the board, so I couldn't really How did really you know that far? you needed 16? Um, It was just, like— I don't know. Just practicing. I think maybe? at some point I did like seventeen or nineteen because you start. I started with a different foot back, but it's just however your speed is going to carry you in. So we'll do short approach in practice, like an eight step or a ten step, and I can still get six meters there. Yeah, but that's just from like power. But you need the speed behind it, speed and power to get. It's like literally physics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to get the right up and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It just kind of. You'll know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Whether you know. need more or less because you'll be tired or you take more time to pick up the speed. Okay. I know Mountain West Championships are coming up. How excited are you about the event? What's the team energy like as the days get closer to it? So this indoor, I'm competing unattached, so I don't compete at conference. I only have an outdoor season left. Oh, okay. So, like, my conference is kind of USA's this okay. week. So that's— How are you preparing for that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> so the last few, I I go to work before. So yeah, that's okay. that's my prep. Really, I just eat right, eat enough. Um, I try to get really good sleep, but it's a little hard. Maybe if I go to bed later because I do work in the morning on yeah. Thursdays and Fridays. Um, other days I do work in the morning, but this is like my. I have two jobs. This is my other job. Okay. So Fridays, depending on what time I compete, is whether or not I leave work early. But it's a half day at the office. Okay. So I go to work. Uh, how do you balance work and doing a sport as a student athlete in college? Um, I can't, I'm kind of lucky with my jobs. So my one job is cycle bar, and those shifts are only around the actual classes. Okay. So we show up like 30 minutes before, sometimes 45, and then we clean up after— one or two classes, however many it is, and then we're done. Okay. So those are short shifts, so I don't have to worry about asking for only four, five, six-hour shifts at, like, a full-time kind of position. Mm -hmm. It That's just not what it is. And I, like, today I work 9 to 11, and then I go to practice, and then I work 4.45 to 8 for the other two classes. Wow. And, like, it just kind of works well around it. Okay. And then the other job is um, just Thursdays and Fridays. Thursday I work all day. Uh, my coach is very kind and considerate because I am I am a grown-up. <laughs> yeah. I have bills to pay, so I'm like, mm -hmm. I need to work Yeah, um, all day. So I work all day at the office then, okay. and then Friday's a half day for them. So I just work and then compete. Wow. And it just works. And, and it, it works. just works. Yeah. And then the weekends, it's just whether or not I'm competing. I work every Sunday. Okay. 7.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Dang. But it's wow. not. I like it. Yeah. I think you have to like it. It gives you something to do, I feel like. Like, it, it does. just doesn't, like, I don't know. It makes you busy. It makes you do things. So. And I really like, I like the job, and I think that helps because, especially with my ADHD, I have to be motivated to do anything. Yeah. If I don't want to do it, if I don't like doing it, it's not going to happen. And if it does, it literally pains me. Okay. But this job is so, like, it's short. The shifts are short, so I don't have to worry about getting stressed out or anything. I enjoy my coworkers and all the people that come in because yeah. I'm very sociable. So it's just, it's an, it doesn't really feel like work. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it's really short. So I'm That's not awesome. overwhelmed by it or anything. I'd be like, oh, I have to go do this. Like, girl, it's three hours. You're fine. <laughs> and my other job, I <laughs> I really enjoy it. It's like an office job. Kind That's of, awesome. But yeah. Cool. There's good people, good doctors too. So yeah. I love it. Something I didn't know when I was doing research. I don't know. I, maybe I should have known this for the sports guy who claims that he loves sports. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that there was an indoor season and outdoor season like that never hit me um, until I was, you know, looking at this. And I'm like, oh, snap, they have two different like the schedules broken up into two different uh, parts. Mm -hmm. Like besides weather playing a factor, um, what are some key differences between the seasons that a common fan like myself wouldn't know? Um, well, I didn't know there was two different seasons until I was doing it myself. Because <laughs> in Vegas, we like it also depends on each state. Yeah, I was but, gonna say in Phoenix, it's all outdoors. There's no indoor. Yeah, yeah Vegas, same, there's no indoor same season thing in California. Yeah, they're, I think because we training. have nice weather too. So I don't know. I yeah. don't know if that plays a factor. Well, in high school, we're just training in that kind of indoor season. We start up like maybe a little bit before winter break, and then when you come back, you're training. And that's kind of like what our fall is in college. And then you compete outdoor. And that's okay. that. But like in Utah, 
Um, also, the events are different. So outdoor and indoor, they they have different throwing events. Oh. So outdoor, there's javelin. There's no javelin indoor because. Yeah, no. <laughs> that I want to be safe. That is far. That is up. That is not good. Indoor, there's hammers. So that's like where they have like the big thing and they're like spinning around and they chuck it. Like yes. the ball and chain thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not outdoor. That's just indoor. Okay. So the events are kind of different. But then also, I don't like, there's there's not weather to affect it. But let's see, indoor. I was going to say the, the track inside is smaller, isn't it? It is smaller. Yeah. So especially with different schools and everywhere, the tracks are different. So at NEU, they have a 300 meter flat track. Oh. We have a 200 meter banked track. Other people's will be a, I don't think there's a 300 meter banked, but there's 200 meter flat tracks. Um, they're actually building a new one in Vegas. I saw that'll be up 2025 20, November and it's going to have, um, an outdoor, uh, like it's a 200 track banked. And it's, this is like an indoor in a whole like building shebang type of deal. It's going to be like bigger than a football stadium. It's gotta be because a 400 meter track is big. Yeah. So then on the outside is a 400 meter track. Wow. But the, mm, at the convention center, our run raised, our podium raised. So the, that's an option for indoor. Not every school has it. Some some of them are flat, like especially if they have flat tracks. Like ISU, they have a podium one. And that was the first time I had jumped on one was at ISU. They're orange, the Bengals. And then NAU is like a flat one. Okay. But outdoor, it's all flat, everything. Do people prefer the flat or do they prefer the leverage? They run fast. On, on the banked ones, they run fast. I, I mean— I ran the 200 for the first time indoor a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Going up, that is pain. Yeah. Going down, it's kind of nice to finish it. And then the distance kids, too, I kind of feel bad for them. I'm like, that's that's got to be so tough. Yeah. Because we don't have a 10K indoor. Okay. That would be 50 laps. The 5K is 25 because Jeez. the track is shorter. So I feel like every event's kind of got their type of thing. A high jump, they're in the middle um, of our— like track yeah like off the 60 yeah, and yeah. stuff that would be different outdoor as well because when wind, wind really there's they calculate your wind so there's wind legal and then when like illegal so if it's two miles per hour i don't know if it's miles per hour kilometers per hour, whatever it is but the number's two and then if it's that or higher it's not considered wind legal so you can get a pr but it won't count towards records for school, nationals, anything like that. It has to be under two. And that's Why? for races, jumps, Why? everything. Because it aids you. <laughs> so if you, um, uh, I mean, for like the 400, you're on all, you're with it and against it if there's wind. But for the mm. other events, um, it's usually, it's usually behind you. And they'll flip it outdoor. They'll flip where you're starting so that you're not running against the wind for a whole race. Yeah. But yeah. Interesting. Okay. Definitely changes things. Do you prefer indoor or outdoor? Indoor. I haven't competed outdoors since 2022. Okay. Because I redshirted last year. Yeah. So I'm kind of wary for this one that's coming up. I'm no, like, Wait, you'll be good. It's been a minute. You'll be good. How do you train for the sport? What makes it so effortless, effortless for you? It's not. <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> not effortless. It is A for effort every day. Yeah. Um, our fall training is pretty tough. There's a lot of reps um, for, like, speed endurance and all of these things. You have to build a lot of muscle because when we're in season, we're competing back-to-back, and that's a lot on the body. So in the middle of the week, we're still hitting, like, the things we need to with, like, technical things, speed, all of that, but it's a l- you have less days to do it, I guess. So in the fall, you have to build up a lot of strength to kind of hold on to okay. throughout the season. Okay. But it, it's a lot, and it's hot, and it's sweaty, and it's hours. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the mental preparation like um, for you as you have an individual event? We've had the past couple episodes, tennis and golf players um, who are competing one-on-one battles against somebody. You know, you're competing essentially by yourself, um, not only against yourself, but also against the people that you're, you know, competing against. Mm-hmm. What do you say— to yourself if you have a bad jump are you worried about scratching you know things like that like what's what's the mentality like for you as you prepare for these jumps a lot of it is trust and it's like every rep kind of matters and every rep has an opportunity to be different so like 
mm, what was it like two weeks ago? Not this past weekend when I PR'd, but the weekend before I had the worst meet I've had in two years. <laughs> Your girl did not hit six meters. I jumped like five sixty four eight two something. I haven't seen that number in a minute. And then I was I was like, okay, cool, cool, really great. Let's try that again. Which is that's the nice thing about field events is you get three attempts. A race, you do not. It's the gun goes off, hit the line, you're done. Yeah. That's your only opportunity. But field events, we get three, and then three more for finals. So mentally, it's like a reset, which is kind of how the multis are, like the hep and the pent is they are back-to-back events. So if you biff it in one, that 30 minutes in between, then you have to kind of recalibrate, reset to get prepared to not biff it on the next one and just take it. It's like, it's a really just a reset button. I was going to ask, so I've been to many track meets. Both my siblings ran track. And going to their meets, I've always seen like a person, if they've pulled their hamstring while running, what happens <sighs> to that athlete, I guess? Do they get disqualified? Like, what happens to their time after they miss that? So there's do not, did not start and did not finish. Okay. So their time, they either they either make it to the line and they finished it or it's did not finish. Okay. So you just have a DNF next to your name. Dang. And so does that affect them for, like, upcoming events, I guess, in the future? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Not necessarily. They probably have like a mark already, a time that's going to get them into whatever Yeah. they need to. But there's still the recovery process kind of with that. Yeah. And I know coming back from those type of things, I haven't torn a hamstring or anything like that. Knock on wood. <laughs> but I know coming back from that, there's just like kind of not necessarily a mental block, but it's like, oh, I, I need to not do that again. Yeah. And if with most things, if you're thinking about not doing it, it's more likely to happen. So if there's uh, injuries are really tough with track. Yeah. I have quite a few and it's just, you just got to get over yeah. it. Because I always feel bad. I'll see somebody like starting and then I see them like limping on the side and then they're off the track. So oh, crying I'm, for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. It's really sad. Yeah. Big owl. Yeah. <laughs> How do you handle like once you finish college, you know, there's no like league or at least not to my knowledge no track and field league where, you know, you finish college, you get drafted to do whatever. Um, I remember attending uh, one of the Lobo track and field events. I think it was right out of COVID, but it was in, you know, in the um, convention center. And I saw a couple, you know, people just had like blank name, like no schools attached to them and they're running. And <laughs> somebody said that's like they're trying to get sponsorships or they're running, you know, for sponsorships or things like that. How does that, you know, go into the whole track and field sport? You know, because same thing with with some of uh, Arda was talking about. He's like, yeah, we don't go to tournaments or competitions. You know, we try and get them sponsored as much because then we're paying out of pocket to, you know, 10 and uh, to, you know, play tennis and things like that. Like, is it the same case with yeah. track and field? Once you once you get out of college, like you have to pay to go to those things and compete. Yeah. So all the all the travel entries because there's entry fees for all of it. Like USA's this weekend, I had to pay an entry fee, um, and that's with any with any meet because there's certain meets where it's like open and you can register. So like I'm unattached right now, so like my registration does have a fee, but we're all home and it's here, so. I don't at least I don't pay that. I don't know. But when it comes to kind of post collegiate, everything is do it yourself. And if you're not signed, you are footing the bill. So you can be like with Puma, Adidas, Nike, um, there's track clubs that you can be so there's affiliate and sponsorship. So whatever training track club you're with is your affiliate, um, which is in college it would be your school. And then there's a sponsor, which is what you wear. Gotcha. More so, like the athletic brands, New Balance, Puma, Nike, Adidas, um, Lululemon. There's a couple of Lululemon athletes now. Cool. And that's that. But you have to be really good at it to yeah. make any sort of money. And those salaries, like, they're not a lot. You don't get paid much. You get paid from competing and winning. Yeah. So you have to win to make any sort of money off of it, really. It's, it's really tough. There's no—yeah. And so you, it's also your image— that kind of makes you the money, those brand deals, all of that. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really tough. I believe it. I believe it. That's why I want a big girl job. 
<laughs> what are your plans, I guess, for after you graduate here? Are you graduating this spring? I graduated last spring. Okay, last spring. Yeah. So are you getting your master's right now? Oh, so I started that. Okay. I will not be finishing that. <laughs> I did not like that. Yeah. I will try again later. <laughs> not soon later. Far later. Maybe when, yeah. when someone, when a job can pay for it, something, whatever. When I really need it, I'll get it. But it, it's going to be something I really love. Yeah. Because I tried it and I wasn't a fan. I was like, this is really just doing too much. They yeah. Could have simplified it. But yeah, no, I'm just going to try. Going to get a big girl job. Yeah. I don't know. I like the jobs I have now, but they're definitely not going to be making ends meet come yeah. the end what, of the year. When you say a big girl job, what what are you, what would you want to do, I guess? I love the idea of just being an office girly. Okay. Like wearing a little pantsuit or something to work? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. Like a, a pantsuit would be nice. But I also know that I would probably get a little hot. So maybe okay. like also days where I could wear a t-shirt and shorts. Okay. I don't know. But I want to be able to talk to people. I wish I could just get paid to talk. <laughs> um, I can't right now. I don't really know how. That's really what I need to figure out is how to get paid to talk. But anything that helps people, Max. has interactions, um, I want to do that. Okay. But I also want to have like my own space and a setup and I need a routine. I think that's very important. I'm especially. Chaotic. Being student athletes, I feel like we have routines that we follow to be successful, um, whether mm -hmm. that's waking up 30, 45 minutes just to make sure you're eating a good breakfast before you have practice, um, making sure you're on time to practice, making sure you're going to your classes, all that stuff. I think it's super, super important to have a routine throughout your day. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad with a routine as well. Like I, I'll have it. It's, it's lost after a week. Like, I yeah. was house-sitting this last week. That's probably why it jumped so well. I was house-sitting this last week. <laughs> I was in a routine, waking up with the animals, bright and early, taking care of them, la di da di da Yeah. Um, this week, I, I don't have that. I woke up at noon yesterday. <laughs> I woke up on uh, body clock from the routine at, like, 7, 7.30. Yeah. I went back to sleep until noon. Yeah. Because I was off from practice. Yeah. Today, I went to work. Tomorrow... I don't know what I'm going to do, but yeah. I, I hope I wake up at an okay time. But yeah. I need a routine okay. that I like yeah. to stick with. Okay. Because if I don't like it, it's not happening. Yeah. Who is your favorite track and field Olympian? Is there anyone in the field aspect that gets overlooked in your opinion? When I started looking at track, I love Sydney McLaughlin, of course. Um, I think Allison Felix is pretty goaded, just for, especially for being a mom and like going back and just— ugh. She's amazing. I love yeah. it. Uh, for the longest time, I kind of, like, in college when I was looking into it, Tara Davis, she became kind of a thing for me because she does long jump. And my teammates would be like, I feel like you'd be best friends with her. You guys, like, we're both just very silly, goofy out there ourselves, whatever. La, la, la. I don't know. And I've jumped with her now. So it's just like. That's cool. It kind of went from her being here to, like, here. Yeah. Not in, like, a rude way, but I'm just like. Okay, I've ex I've experienced this yeah. multiple times, so I'm like, okay, and now I don't I don't know who look to look up to, yeah, because yeah, I don't I'm in the same bubble now, yeah, which is really weird. Also, That's I had really to have cool. like a pep talk. I was like, Bob, I think it was at USA's or some meet. I was like, I was like, please tell me I deserve to be here. Please, I was like, this, please tell me I earned it. Whatever. He's like, it's fine. You got this. Blah blah blah. I'm like, this is it's so weird. It's you literally step into another bubble with those Olympians, and I'm like. And everybody's like, do you know them? Do you see them? They do this, they do that. And I'm like, I have no idea who they are. They're like, they have the world record. Oh, cool. I don't know the sport that well. Yeah. But I do know the one, the ones that are really, really, really good at it and kind of like more in the social media aspect world of it. Yeah. They've made a name and yeah. I know it now. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I would have to agree with you with Sydney McLaughlin. She's like one of my favorite track athletes to watch. I feel like she's always breaking records and it's so cool. I think it's the 400 hurdles. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, but she's really fun to watch and yeah, I really enjoy watching her whenever she races. She's so cool and pretty she, and yeah. just a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She went to, she went to USC. Allison Felix went to USC. Um, USC has been 
the track and field team is pretty darn dope. I'm a guy. I'm probably tend to use Usain Bolt. You know, I knew um, you were gonna legend. say that. I knew you were gonna say yeah, that. Cause, legend. Because yeah, growing up, you know, it'd be like, all right, timing. You know, like, yeah. like let's, let's yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, he's out here, and it's like, okay, football players try and race him, and then he's yeah. dusting us. You know, and then he's breaking our forty record in shoes. Yes. You know, on turf, like who does that? Nobody does that except yeah. for this guy. Yep. Um, he's lightning so the queen be, of track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason. And then, you know what I'm saying? He's got the whole smirk in Jamaica. You know what I'm saying? The homeland, you know. <laughs> brother, you know, yeah. I'm just like, bro. Yeah, so I can't. I can't. But Shikari Richardson's very quickly climbing up my list. Like, I really. Very quickly. Yes. I have a lot of respect for her. I think she's really good. And I hope she keeps on getting better and better in the future. Yeah. Yeah. People be hating on her for I no know. Reason. I know. There's a lot of them. Um, it's a it's a big sport with all mm-hmm. the different events. It's, yeah, everybody kind of looks towards the sprinters. Yeah, field events they get they get kind of slacked off of it. Yeah. But the sprinters, I mean, they look good doing it. Mm-hmm. They're they're real quick. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be fast. Everybody wants to jump high. I remember. I wish I wish I was the Flash. I wish I could fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this close to it now with long jump, but that's about Bars. it. Bar. That was a bar. That was a bar. That was actual. That was an actual bar. I wish I could. What? I wish I was fast. I wish I could jump high, but now I'm the Flash and I I can fly. Like, is, is that what you just said? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Something like Thank that. Thank you, Chase. Yeah. He was on yeah. it. That's Jeez. great. Chase is ruined for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and then do you have any other hobbies outside of track? I know you work, but like, do you like to read? Mm. Do you like to do anything else? Uh, I mean, life is better when there's sunshine. Yeah. So when the sun's out, I'm out. I like to be outside, whether it's swimming, just literally laying out. Yeah. Tanning. I mean, I get You can never go wrong with that. Yeah. Ever. No. No. Um, Anything I can do outside, I kind of like. I like just looking. I'm a stare. I zone out to La La Land a lot. (laughs) Put me on top of a mountain. (laughs) I don't know what kind of trees they are, but I have friends that will know. Yeah. But I'll look at them. I don't know. Okay. I, yeah, I'm pretty boring. I like to read. I like to drive. I like to listen to music. I with that ADHD. I I don't know. I get hyper fixed on something. I think something. I'm looking it up for hours. Yeah. I don't know. It's just whatever happens happens. Okay. I like to cook. I like to cook more than I like to eat. Okay. More of the like creative outlet of it. Yeah. I like to color. I'm not a good I'm not a good drawer, but I can color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mostly inside the line. Sometimes a little out, but nobody's okay. perfect. <laughs> well, Lizzie, thank you so much for coming on. This has been such a pleasure. You are so bright and talented. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. You know, like we, you need your own daily daily show, like because you could just talk for hours and hours. And oh yeah. Time and make it sound entertaining and fun. And so I thank you for coming on. Much continued success. Thank oh, yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. You're so outgoing, so fun to talk to. You guys um, are so sweet. <laughs> we are so excited to see, like, what you do in the future and wish you the very best. So thank Bring you so back. much. I miss you already. <laughs> <laughs> Part thank two. You. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Line it up. That was Lizzie White on the Science Guy podcast. An absolute joy. I, I might, I might rewatch this one, li- re-listen to it like maybe three times. Like this is just so fun. I know Aww. this one was a fun episode. I really enjoyed this. Ladies and gentlemen, been tuned in next week. We have another special guest for you uh, on the Science Guy podcast, episode sixteen. Can't wait for seventeen. Go Lobos. Go Lobos. Go Lobos.